It's another busy day for wildlife in the Cotswold Water Park, from otters making a welcome return to water voles staging a brave fight back. These creatures and many more are all very much at home here. It looks like the most natural of all environments, but it's only when you get a bird's eye view that you realise that much of the park was created not by nature, but by people in the quarrying industry. The water park has 150 lakes spread over 40 square miles. There are 18 nature reserves, 64 fishing lakes and 19 for water sports. Sitting astride the Wiltshire-Gloucestershire border, the water park is home to 22,000 people and thousands more visit all year round for leisure and holidays. There was no real strategic plan until comparatively recently. But what's happening here now has a real cohesive energy. That owes a great deal to the support of today's mineral products industry. The locally based Hills Group first quarried here in 1919, way before the park was conceived. Since then it's worked 15 sites and extracted nearly 20 million tonnes of sand and gravel to help feed the region's need for building materials. Across Wiltshire as a whole, the Hills Group has also delivered millions of pounds worth of landfill tax and other funding to wildlife and community causes. It also gives both practical support and enthusiasm. We are a local family company and we care passionately about the area from which we make our living. Our sustained financial support of the Cotswold Water Park Trust and the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust will ensure that we create wildlife habitats not just for the current generations, but for future generations. The high quality restoration we achieve on the land that we borrow to extract aggregate has won us many awards, not just us, but our partners as well. The end result of the quarry operator's work will often be wildlife rich sites like this one, but it also provides an opportunity to create lakes for leisure or the land can be restored for farming. The key lies in the quality of the restoration. The Wiltshire Wildlife Trust has enjoyed a long-term partnership with Hills. One of the projects that have benefited is this stunning nature reserve at Lower Moor Farm, which in turn is a gateway to several more. This is the most extraordinary site, an incredible place for wildlife. It's right on the edge of the, uh, of the Spine Road, easy access for people. And once they turn off, they come in and they just find this amazing haven for the most diverse range of wildlife. We've got here some of the most wonderful gravel pits, which has the cleanest water, uh, incredibly pure, which has some very rare plants in it. We've got orchids growing on the sides of the lake. We've got amazing birds. We've got otters living here as well. And we're next door to the finest hay meadows in the whole of the country. It's been a great encouragement to us as a wildlife trust to work with a company that's so enthusiastic, so passionate about actually putting stuff back into the environment and helping to, to provide for the future of the, uh, of the county. Other operators that have contributed significantly to the evolution of the water park include the Cullimore Group, Aggregate Industries, Hanson and Tarmac. This former Hanson site dates from the 1950s and is now a premier holiday location as well as a valuable ecological habitat. Sites that have much to offer to wildlife also include this one being developed by the Cullimore Group at Marston Maisie. The plans here include a series of small lakes and wetlands. Gravel and, and quarrying, it, it, it's a finite thing. It doesn't, it doesn't last forever. Um, you move on, but it, it's what you do with the land afterwards. And, you know, we've got um, something happening at, at one, of our, one of our sites which will, will bring a leisure activity and a, a new sporting pursuit, which is becoming very hot. Uh, and there'll be, hopefully, if, if planning permits and, and, and councils approve, there'll be uh, a, a world-class wakeboarding facility at one of our sites in this area. The job of managing the water park and masterminding its future rests with the Cotswold Water Park Trust. The trust operates several nature reserves and has worked particularly closely with aggregate industries in building on the considerable wildlife potential at this site known as Cleveland Lakes. Its purchase by the Trust was part funded by the now defunct Aggregates Levy Sustainability Fund, which the industry and many beneficiaries would love to see restored.
the reserve has a large area of reed bed, marsh swamp and willow car. Other plants here include a rowing lake. You might well see otters here and there's a good chance nowadays that you could spot water voles. The Trust has mounted a successful campaign to help the tiny creatures overcome the twin threats of habitat loss and predatory American mink invasion. Well, what we've done since the start of the project in 2002 is try and initially halt the decline of water voles in the Cotswold Water Park through habitat management and mink control. And now we're at a point where we start to see increases in numbers on the, the Thames catchment through the water park. Amongst the park's many facilities is the Gateway Centre, a place for rest, refreshment and information. The Cotswold Water Park Trust runs Gravel is Great sessions here to raise awareness amongst children of the industry's role. The Gateway Centre is such a focal point for visitors to the Cotswold Water Park. It's sort of geographically located in a really well, in a really good position, and um, we get a lot of locals coming in here for information. But often, for the first-time visitor, this area can be a little bit difficult to navigate around. And so, by coming to the Gateway Centre, they can pick up a map, pick up information, and talk to volunteers who man the information desk at the weekends and during school holidays. And it's just, you know, I don't know where we would be without it. Actually, it's such become such a crucial part of the water park. There's a lot more sand and gravel to be dug here over the coming years and that will in turn mean a much larger park. With the restoration of today's quarries now being planned from the outset with nature, leisure or farming in mind, the future for the park looks exciting. It's come a tremendous distance and not only is it a nationally, now internationally important wetland site, you know, we have over 20,000 birds staying here each winter. We've got nationally important populations of breeding birds. You know, we've got thriving populations of water vole and utter. The list goes on and on. And all of this has been brought about through uh, gravel extraction and restoration. The water park is only just over halfway through its lifespan. So think about how far we've come already and then we've got to look forward over the next 20, 30, 40 years to effectively doubling, uh, doubling the area and hopefully achieving a lot more.